day so you could see that our basic aspiration is to be happy and prosperous in continuity and to ensure happiness and prosperity in continuity i require three things the first and foremost is right understanding that is going to be ensured in the self by the self second thing is relationship and there also you know i need to understand the right feeling in the relationship that comes at the second priority and the third priority is physical facility with right understanding only i am able to make out the feelings in the relationship which are naturally acceptable to me as well as the other so that when i live by that i am also happy my relative is also happy that leads to mutual happiness isn't it and with right understanding only i am able to make out the need for physical facility rightly isn't it also able to make out the right way to produce so that my family is prosperous and i am enriching the rest of nature also are you able to see this so i had given you one assignment that you have to count your clothes yesterday evening how many of you have counted okay 1 2 3 Mike. Sir, it took uh, three hours yesterday for me to cross this Mandalore. Uh, uh, so no time. So by the time, <laughs> by the time I reached home, we became very tired. And then uh, after uh, having dinner, we slept. So yeah, but after this workshop, you can make an Excel sheet, list all the clothes, and count them, <laughs> and keep it ready. Keep it ready. Yes. <laughs> the need for physical facilities limited. Can you raise your hands? Okay, very nice. In fact, we see that it's only a matter of our observation. The moment I observe that the need for physical facilities limited, we'll see a shift in the feeling of prosperity. Earlier, we might be perturbed by, you know. the desire to have more and more for example but the moment i am able to see that this is limited the need is limited since this is not being fulfilled so i am working here many times ultimately you know i require respect from my relative but i have assumed that the respect is going to be ensured by physical facility that's how the need for physical facility appears to be unlimited otherwise it is limited so you will be able to see a shift in your feeling of prosperity now i feel that yes i am fulfilled on these counts i am more than what i require in terms of food in terms of clothes in terms of shelter you right? know maybe if something is less i will work for it we'll also i'll also give a hint here many times no when the faculty come and discuss about salary so i tell them that when you are looking at the salary take into account the salary of both the spouses just don't look at you know your salary or his salary or her salary and then look into the income of the family also look into the needs of the family and the income in the family and not only that take into account all the assets that you have earlier so as we make a kind of uh, stock taking no in accounts so assets and liabilities income and expenditure and then profit and loss so count your assets what all property you have what all you know <laughs> things you have as assets count your liabilities count your income you know make an assessment of the need for physical facility so that you are able to assess your expenditure and then see whether it is enough or not many times our vision is not that extended we just look into our income forget about the income of the spouse or other income sources or the assets that we have if you look that way you feel much more prosperous so many times we are not able to assess the needs we are also not able to assess the availability of physical facility that we have and we are always bothered about the difference between what i have and what i need to have more if you make that assessment sincerely and i will see that many faculty might be able to see that i have much more than what i require does it, does it make sense <laughs> you can see that so with right understanding i can you know be able to make out how much physical facility i require and for that only we are discussing the harmony of self and body 
and I can be able to see the feeling of prosperity in me. And once I feel prosperous, I feel like sharing with the other. Isn't it? I feel like nurturing the other, be it human being or the rest of nature. Why will I exploit the forest, the land, the rivers? When I am able to see that I have much more than what I require, I will nurture them. Isn't it? I will nurture my relative also. So essentially, if this is ensured in life, I have mutual happiness in every relationship, mutual prosperity with the rest of nature. What else I require? This is the complete achievement in my life. I don't require anything more than this. And we could also see yesterday that right understanding means understanding harmony at every level of my living because harmony is happiness. So I need to understand harmony in the human being, harmony in the family, harmony in the society, in the nature and existence. This is understanding. This is the core of education, this understanding part. And then I can learn skills for living accordingly, skills for communication, skills for you know, uh, production, skills for management, all those skills I can learn. But at the core is right understanding. Presently, we are trying to learn skills of communication, skills of management, production, you know, medicine, all those things. But we are ignorant about the right understanding and that's how we are not able to end up with mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. And you can see that this development in the self can take place to an extent so that I am able to ensure mutual happiness in every relationship, that is justice in every relationship. And then my competence will live with justice extends from family to the world family. So you see that the more right understanding I develop within me, my behavior becomes more fulfilling in my family, in my department, with the students, with the parents of the students, isn't it? With the management. In general, you are sitting in a bus and going, your behavior becomes more fulfilling to the conductor, to your fellow passenger, because I am relaxed within, I am in harmony within. So whosoever comes to me, I you know, respond with the feeling of harmony. So my competence grows you know, to be a part of undivided society. There is no more division in me. We'll discuss it further when we talk about relationship today. Similarly, I am able to see you know, the whole world as my family and I am able to participate in it. Presently, it may be the case that I am trying to exploit the rest of the world to fulfill my family. But I can now see that the needs of my family are limited and the whole world is my relative. This family is a part of bigger family, isn't it? Today when we are not able to even look at the joint family as a family, we can see the whole world as a family. That kind of competence can be developed just by self-exploration. Because that natural acceptance is already there in you. Only that we have to refer to it. So this is human consciousness. We are human beings, you know? but to be human, we have to develop this. So this transformation is desirable from education, then only we are developing in a holistic sense. It may be the case that presently, unknowingly, we are only thinking about physical facilities, working for physical facility, trying to enjoy everything through physical facility, but ultimately we are suffering within oneself, suffering relationships, suffering in terms of health, suffering in terms of relation with the nature. But from here we can move to this state where we are fulfilled in entirety. We are fulfilled every moment, isn't it? And that is our basic aspiration. Basic aspiration means whatever I do, that is there at the back of my you know, desire. Essentially, I want to be happy. If I also am able to contemplate on this, that essentially I am working to be happy. So why will I do anything which will create fear in me? Why will I do anything which creates some guilt in me? If I do that, I will not be happy. <laughs> if that understanding is developed, my conduct is naturally going to be humane. If I am taking some decision which is going to create fear in me, doing something which is going to create doubt in me or opposition for others, how will I ensure my happiness? I can see very much clearly. It is not something to be dictated from outside. I can see innately that this is not my happiness. So my conduct naturally you know, becomes ethical, becomes the right way. So this we began exploring one by one, harmony at every level. 
We could also see that whatever is being stated here is a proposal and there is no need to assume it true or false but rather verify on one's own right. So listening to the proposal is the first thing that I am able to listen to the proposal, isn't it? And then I am able to verify on the basis of my natural acceptance. There is some innate faculty in me which is there every moment, only I have to refer to it. Many times we are engrossed in our thoughts. You know? For example, now you are trying to decide whether I should take idli in the morning or sandwich in the morning. What is your natural acceptance? You cannot decide. <laughs> Both the choices may be okay. <laughs> but when you are trying to ask yourself, why should I eat for health or for taste? You are able to decide. So when you look at the level of feeling, you are able to find out the natural acceptance. So whatever I eat, sandwich or idli or something else, and I can always decide that I need to eat for my health. And if you are able to see this, there is one of, another major shift that you will take in your imagination. Maybe at some place you are getting idli for 500 rupees. At some place you are getting idli for 200 rupees. When you are cooking at home, it may cost only 10 rupees. Ultimately, it's not the money that you require. It's not the food that will count. It's ultimately the health that you want. Is that true? So what essentially, like at the level of money, you can see a lot of difference. At the level of physical facility, you can see a lot of difference. But in terms of health, ultimately we derive health out of food. If I'm able to see to that extent, penetrate my Anna, observation, that extent, then I can see very much that essentially I'm taking food for health. If the health is ensured, fine. Essentially, I am working for happiness. If happiness is ensured, fine. So, I can verify on the basis of my natural acceptance and I can also validate in my living, in my behavior with human beings, whether it is leading to mutual happiness or not, in my work with the rest of nature, whether it is leading to mutual prosperity or not. So, many times we will have prescriptions that don't use single use plastic. So sometimes there would be a norm coming and then there would be some fines you know, levied on the uh, these people who are sailing by the roadside or people who are carrying plastics. Things will become very prominent sometime and again, you know, <laughs> going to nowhere. Why is that happening? Because we are not able to see how my fulfillment is going to be there with the rest of nature. On one hand, we are producing those plastics. On the other hand, we are prescribing not to use. Sometimes norms are there, sometimes norms are ignored those things would be happening. But if I am able to see my fulfillment with the rest of nature, I can decide by myself what to do. There is no need for any external agency to enforce anything on me, isn't it? Even if it is uh, uh, not there, I can go by that. If, and I can also use to the extent which is not going to spoil the nature, isn't it? So I can decide by myself. If I go by this way, I can decide by myself. There is no need for any external agency to enforce anything on me. So when I am able to verify on the basis of my natural acceptance and when I am able to live accordingly, it becomes a part of my right understanding that yes, this is what is fulfilling me and this is going to fulfill me every moment. Every child has to go through this process. I may be having the right understanding but when I am talking to the child, I have to propose to the child in place of enforcing on the child because the child again will have to go, to go through this whole process. As it takes time for me, it will take time for my child also. It will take time for all the 60 students sitting in front of my class, in my class also, in front of me. So the task, basic task as a human being is to enable this process in each one of us. And when you are proposing to the child, the child will ask you questions. You tell the child that I have found you, you know, using mobile so many times. You know, don't use your mobile for so much time. Only half an hour is prescribed for you. And then the child will say that I have seen you watching the mobile for three hours. You know. First, check care of yourself. <laughs> so when you are proposing to the child, the child will ask very genuine questions to which you have to respond. Irritated. Yes. And once you get irritated, he will say that you don't have right understanding. <laughs> so when you are proposing to the other, your responsibility becomes much more to assure the other in the relationship. Then only the other is able to accept your proposals, verify your proposals. So you could see that the basic aspiration as a human being is to have continuity of happiness and prosperity 
and happiness is nothing but to be in a state of harmony this is what we are aspiring for essentially and prosperity is a feeling okay it's not a possession it's a feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility now when i am clear about this that essentially i want to be in harmony and prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required then only i can make the right program for prosperity in fact uh, under uh, unnat <coughs> bhatriyan we have to go to some village so we went to one village uh, near noida and we were talking to the people there we found that one national highway had passed by that village and then the land was uh, taken by the government and the remuneration was given uh, so almost every youth in the village was earning more than 1 lakh rupees sitting at home somebody t- uh, taking even 5 to 10 lakhs rupees because one generation back what people were doing they were just using the money or wasting the money but the new generation what they are doing they are you know making buildings on that land by by the money that they have got building hostels building you know shops and gyms and all those things so they are just getting lakhs of rupees sitting at home now if you look at their need already they have much more than what they require so ultimately what they require is right understanding to utilize that fund rightly and that is the case with many families if you see so many highways being made so many you know patches of land being acquired by the government for industry or uh, from some other some other purposes the villages are getting so much of funds out of that and there are lakhs of people like this in our country only they need right understanding if you are able to take the right program to them the whole country can be in a better state but if the right program is not there they are going to misuse it isn't it so if you make the right assessment you can be able to see that yes many of the families today also are having more than what is required then we talked about harmony in the human being we could see that there are two realities to address when we talk about a human being self that is i and body right my needs are completely different from the needs of the body all my needs are continuous trust respect happiness i want in continuity every need of the body is temporary isn't it and that is required only in limited quantity my needs are qualitative if i require it i require every moment if i don't require it i don't require at all this kind of thing is there with my needs for the body i require but in limited quantity for limited time in fact you see that whatever is required for the body if i have less than that it is a problem and if it is more than that also much more than that then also it is a problem for example if i am feeling hungry and i don't have food it is a problem but if i have hunger for three chapatis and i am made to eat five chapatis that is again a problem maybe a bigger problem <laughs> isn't it so if i have physical facilities which is less than requirement it is a problem but if i have physical facilities much more than what is required it may be a bigger problem today children are taxing their parents they are saying that you are earning so much you have to invest on my birthdays you have to invest on my vehicle you have to invest on my gadgets isn't it in the ncr it so happened that some time back one uh, vehicle tramped over some person sitting on the road side okay and then it was investigated by the media and then they found that in many families husband and wife both are earning and they are earning too much so the children are taxing them so the children are asking them to give them gifts costing 60 lakhs 70 lakhs maybe a car was gifted to that person who did this act costing 60 lakhs okay. the parents do not have time for the children and the children are taxing them in terms of gifts and other such things you know so what is happening if the facility is much more than what is required it is again a problem a bigger problem the child is getting into crime the child is getting into intoxication isn't it excuse me i don't, i don't think like that because you have been taught the values to the kid not really the kid is asking like this see okay having more money is not a crime but utilizing the money correctly is the way to do anyway so that's the issue now the issue is not really making more money than what you have 
the physical assets more than the question is how do you utilize those physical assets the second point is your, your example is you know because of that the kid is asking you haven't impacted the right value in the kid you haven't taught him properly you haven't behaved with him properly that's the issue so you you cannot have that's the reason for making the kid to go back that's not the issue that's not right yeah so when you talk about utilizing the money rightly why will you accumulate that much you can really do philanthropic activities. You can do so many things with that. That's nothing. Yeah. That's so nothing I'll share things. with the other. I'll share with society. Correct. Yeah. So and if I, if I demonstrate that to the kid, the kid will know clearly that you know he has to share that thing with the, with, the, with, the, with other people too. Yeah. So, so in place of hoarding or accumulating, I'll share with the society. I'll share with the people. I'll share with the relatives, isn't it? If I'm not doing that, I'm only accumulating and indulging myself. The child will also be forced to ask for such things for indulgence. Then that means you haven't done your internal analysis properly. Yes. So it comes back to you immediately. Certainly. Yes. So, yes. So, my, so my question is having more money is not the wrong thing. So <laughs> fix that done, then come back, you don't analyze it yourself properly. Or the thing. Yeah. Dr. Mohan, Dr. Mohan, I just disagree with you. In my opinion, personal opinion, whatever you have excess... One, one, one by one, one by one, yeah. If, 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 uh, one by one, one by one, listen to yeah. you. Yeah, Dr. Mohan, I completely disagree with you. In my perception, whatever we have extra, that belongs to somebody else. You cannot become rich without making somebody poor. That's for my personal opinion. No, which is fine. But my question right now is, if you don't have it, you can create industries. You can create anything. You can create useful things. You cannot do all these things, you know. Yes, in that case, you know, everybody will make enough money. Okay, fine, thank you very much. You will stop right now, right? You will not work hard. You will not do anything at all. Having more money is not a crime. It's not wrong thing. You know, it's not saying, I, I didn't steal from somebody else. I work hard for it. So that's a different thing. So it's not somebody's money. It is it's my hard-earned effect is on there. The question is, how do you utilize the money is very important. That's very important. If you do, otherwise the whole the, the whole thing will completely come to a standing still. No invention, nothing. Everything will say, okay, I got enough food for this day. I got the old way of doing things. I don't. But next tomorrow, God will give it to me tomorrow. It's okay. I'll wait for that. Then everybody will be, will be peaceful oh, and, and quietly sitting in the villages, and everybody is happy. No, accumulating no. money is not uh, wrong as far as it is concerned. But whatever money is which is accumulated, it should be spent for the needy Wisely. in a particular ratio. Sir, only that depends upon the individual. Yeah. So, with right understanding, I will work for universal human order. So, I'll do create industries and I'll do certain things, but that would mean for universal human order, not to fetch more money. Isn't it? Only Rishis yeah. uh, can do it, sir. See, uh, we, are, <laughs> we are all, after all, we are all human beings. Uh, so we have all... In fact, the problem is that the moment we talk about right understanding, we assume them to be something special. No, we all have the same natural acceptance. Maybe there is one Mahatma Gandhi or one uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, Ramana Maharishi, or maybe one, uh, see, only one can be there. Not no, everybody no. can become uh, Ramana Maharishi. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> then, uh, then, uh, sir, then what will happen? We, we, even you will not have a forum to talk like this. Eh? No, so human values, you are now talking about human values. Eh? No, we, we don't I'm not asking you, speak now. At I'm not asking you to go without physical facility. I'm saying make the right assessment and fulfill it. No, uh, I have a point. Uh, here, here. <laughs> uh, he says that uh, accumulation of wealth is not a crime. And it's my hard work. The outcome of my hard work is the accumulation of health. This value must be taught to your kid. What he cited as an example was the parents didn't teach the, uh, the struggle that they had to earn this money. They just like that gave a uh, foreign car. The, the incident that he is quoting, it's a luxurious car uh, given to a kid who didn't know the value of the money or the value of life and he went uh, in a very uh, rash manner and drove on the platform and uh, four or five lives were lost. So that is the thing he is, he is trying to... Yeah. So that's what I'm saying, that with the physical facility less than a limit, it is a problem. 
if it is above a particular limit it is again a problem yes no uh, say for example rockefeller's son i think only in india we don't have this dignity of labor in other countries we have dignity of labor rockefeller's son was a server or something in a restaurant uh, he didn't use his father's money only in india we use a parents money parents also they want to support the children yeah yeah say so pampering the kid that's how it happens. even they do subject their parents are accepting their estimate their yes sir it's wrong it's wrong yes ma'am mic le lijiye one uh, uh, one uh, resource person i told this a very nice point in one of the workshop which i would like to like he said uh, somewhere our elders if you see grandparents at that time they did not have much money for them making a house was a big pro, uh, you know big thing so they they worked so hard to make the house so the next generation which came they already had a house so they only worked for getting a car and a luxury so then they took a car and then the next generation already had a car already had a house which has been accumulated so they wanted something else so they started working on the luxury now what we are doing we are giving all this to our children they don't have a goal they have everything so they don't know what to earn for we already have that is the reason probably uh, because somewhere all these when they're working hard for giving what next i can pass next i can pass they forgot the self they did not enjoy their self they gave up their whole thing uh, for the thing and now all those has been enjoyed by the children and uh, they are uh, forgetting values and uh, <laughs> even you know there's no goal at all that's the when the problem. family has enough physical facility they have enough time to work for this to work hmm. for this so that they are able to be a foundation for this sir actually I, i would say here my father bought me 3 acres of land so way back uh, at that time only 10000 rupees uh, one acre now i sold it for around uh, 60 lakhs uh, recently some 3 or 4 years before so whatever uh, my father has bought it has uh, benefited me so like madam was saying the cost at that time may be very less but when i when it came to me it was very useful so when i, I sold it and i also invested it uh, uh, so i so want to see that now you have enough <laughs> no, that is the point no, that type That's of uh, value if you inculcate definitely whatever uh, you earn or you have extra it is going to be useful sir not today maybe uh, sometime uh, no that's what we are saying that yeah. if i am able to see that i have enough i will not be working more and more for this i will work for this so if we have earned enough for the children we can in fact uh, encourage our children to work in totality with the holistic holistic perspective actually to measure the things correctly say for example we have about 10 lakhs per year if we get it and if we spend on yourself and the family only about 2 and 2 and a half lakhs the rest are being spent on something useful for philanthropic activities it will change the kids will change automatically the kids would know very clearly what we do with that yeah it's very important you know i think that i i, I agree i think that having more money is also very important to really if possible to help other people too and do something wisely something not have the money in the bank and just look at it and then say, okay enjoy it like that or invest there in stocks and bonds and then anyway that we can that. that's a way to think about yeah. it there also you can see the society also they are essentially what is required is right understanding and right feeling for the rest of the society also so gradually you'll see that physical facility has a very small role to play in my life and in others life more prominent more important is this right understanding right feeling sir so in uh, abroad countries this uh, the son or daughter will earn their own money for their higher education and the parents also even they are rich they are not bothered they don't disturb because they know the value because son or daughter has to earn by their own they have to stand up by their own but in india we have a feeling or a uh, understanding that i suffered maybe my daughter or son should not suffer i didn't have a that kind of mobile or that kind of luxury car or something at least my son or daughter should have it that's what we so uh, whatever we didn't have it earlier we wanted to provide it to our another next generation that the next generation take it as granted 
So uh, this uh, mentality to change from the other side also, not only from the children's. So as you mentioned, children are asking money for their uh, gadgets and other things. That's one thing. Parents are also willing to do that. Yeah, but I'll say that, that at the same time, the example that you're starting from the West, that may not be actually you know, the right way to do also, maybe. If the feeling of relationship is not there, then also it may happen. In fact, one person came from Germany in a workshop at IIIT Hyderabad and we were talking about harmony in the family and we have been mentioning family time and again. On the fifth day, he came in the evening and said to the resource person that you have been using this word family, family so many times. How do you define family? <laughs> now for India, defining family is not a big thing. <laughs> now he told that his parents divorced, his mother married somewhere else, his father married somewhere else and now he's nowhere. He is looking for his family. Me, myself. Yeah. <laughs> so it is said, no, that there is a joke that we just to see your children and my children are working with, are fighting with our children. <laughs> so that, that should not be the case, isn't it? <laughs> Did not be the case. Okay, nice. <clears throat> then we went to discuss the harmony in the self. We could see that within me there is imagination. And the imagination can have three sources. This was another important thing that we discussed yesterday and I'll keep referring to it today also. So my imagination can have three different sources. One could be preconditioning, the other could be sensation and the third could be natural acceptance. Now if I'm going by preconditioning, we took some examples, Hannah, how we get preconditioned. Then I'm enslaved. If I go by sensation, then also I'm enslaved. But if I am able to refer to my natural acceptance, then only I am self-organized. I do remember that in 1999, I was working with one company in Lucknow, Tata Motors. And at that time, uh, this Cricket World Cup was taking place in India. And a new kind of thing was introduced in the market, deodorant. And before that, deodorant was not there in Indian market. So in every match, it would be shown that one girl and a boy are sitting there in the arena. And the boy has not used deodorant, so the girl is moving away from her. And the moment he uses the deodorant, the girl is coming closer to him. Right? And this kind of ad was shown for one and a half months. And then, I, my own uh, fellow workers, they started talking about deodorants. Earlier they used to take bath neatly and I come to the office. Now they started talking about deodorants, asking each other whether you are using the deodorant or not. And another big thing happened, they stopped taking bath, just using deodorant. <laughs> what is happening? Through these ads, we are getting preconditioned that this is a developed way of life. And if I am taking bath every day, and I am underdeveloped, if I am using deodorant not taking bath, I am <laughs> developed. <laughs> so, this, are, this is the way we get conditioned in multiple ways. Isn't it? So, going by the norms, and assuming anything to be true without verifying. Similarly, we can get motivated by sensation. So if this ad is influencing my imagination, I am preconditioned. If the perfume, the, the smell of the deodorant is forcing me to go for it, then it is sensation. But I can decide for myself whether I require it or not, if I need it or not. If it is curing the body of some disease, well and good. If not, then it is not required at all. This way, if you try to see, you can make an assessment of various desires that we have within and whether we have verified them rightly or not, or we are just trying to fulfill those desires without ever being clear whether I require it or not. One cousin of mine, she got a job and then she made a plan of 30 before 30. That is, she had to tour 30 countries before she turns 30. Now just see, from where is this desire coming? How much money is going to be spent in the process? That money can be spent on parents, that can, money can be spent on the other siblings who are not able to do so well in academics maybe. But that kind of desire is not there. The desire is to tour 30 countries and spend so much. So we have to make a list of our desires as we were doing yesterday. This is something that we did you know, here. But you can make your list of desires at a personal level and then analyze what is the source of your desire. Is it coming from some preconditioning? The problem is that if you are going by preconditioning, even if you fulfill the desire, you are not going to be happy in continuity. If you are going by sensation, even if you fulfill the desire, you are not going to be happy in continuity. So it becomes a self-defeating process. I work for it, 
I fulfill it and I get defeated myself. Isn't it? It becomes a self-defeating process. I get self-organized only when I refer to my natural acceptance. So presently it may be the case that most of my desires are coming by preconditioning. Yeah. Using a deodorant or a perfume can be a natural acceptance too. You cannot say it's purely sensation. So that we have because, to find out. Because a lot of things, if you look at very well, uh, with, with all your indriyams and everything, if you do it, naturally there are some things of natural acceptance too. For example, I'm, I'm reading something. I'm, I'm learning something. I'm hearing something for some specific... I'm hearing right now. Right? It's a natural acceptance. It's not really a sensation. Yeah, so that is not the issue. The issue is why you are going for a particular product that you have to look into. What is the purpose? If the purpose is something to do with the health of the body or right understanding, right feeling, then it is acceptable to you naturally. If the purpose is to get happiness out of that sensation, it is coming from sensation. If it is fetch respect from others, demonstrating that particular thing, it is something to do with the preconditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I have found many times that even even if the weather is hot I found many times yeah. look into all those issues we will talk about health Anna. so many times we are compromising on health and going for sensation the kind of clothes that you are using, the kind of you know, things that we are using, it might be spoiling health. Like it is being said that you have to walk for 10,000 steps in a day to ensure good health. You might be sitting in the vehicle all the time, sitting in the chair all the time, creating pain in the lower back, you know, spoiling our stomach, our intestine, isn't it? Utilizing, using the physical facilities and is spoiling our health. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So what we essentially aspire for is to have this. My complete imagination is guided by right understanding. Isn't it? Then only I am living with human consciousness. Otherwise partly I am uh, there with animal consciousness. Then only the happiness is showed in continuity. So this is what we discussed yesterday. Is it imagination or what is the right word? Yeah, imagination sometimes no, we ascribe this word. Yeah, not only thought, even desire. So imagination includes imagination includes desire, thought, expectation, all. And as you were mentioning yesterday, you know, some of the participants had mentioned that I have to remove expectation. That is not the case. Expectation is your own activity. The expectation has to be guided by right understanding. Removing expectation is not the program. The program is to have proper guidance for the expectation. If I am expecting something outside to happen for my happiness, then my continuity of happiness is not ensured. But if I am expecting happiness to be ensured through right understanding, it is going to be fulfilled. The expectation itself is not, not a problem. The problem is you know, not being guided by right understanding. There, it doesn't differ from person to person. It is also not something to prescribe. It is something innate in you that you have to refer to. No need. That set is here. See, you will see two things here. Whatever is naturally acceptable to you, you will be able to see that this is universal. Everybody accepts the same thing naturally, one thing. Second thing, it is there as a set of proposals. But ultimately, you have to reflect. If it is prescribed, you are not able to relate to it. If it is made a law that in SRM, every faculty has to have limited physical facility. The very next day there is going to be a revolution. <laughs> Who are you to prescribe for me? Uh, I am working for it, it is my money. How can you dictate? But if you ask yourself whether the need for physical facility is limited or not, you are able to explore very much. So once you are trying to prescribe, it becomes a kind of domination, a dictation. 
isn't it? But you can explore very much. For example, if you see, everybody is sitting here in a different kind of posture, if you see. Anna? Taking care of the health of the body. Now, if it is made a rule that you have to sit like this only, you can't change. The very moment, Anna, it is going to be a revolt. <laughs> Who am I to prescribe for you? Right? You are sitting comfortably by yourself. So the prescription can never be the guideline for ensuring harmony in any family, society, organization. It can never be. The basis only has to be natural acceptance. The guidance is there. For example, we had some Hana, request that please don't use mobile phones. It is a guidance that is being given so that you are able to listen properly to the proposals. So that is there, you know, like the sitting arrangement has to be made. It's not that one person starts sitting and facing the other side of the road, the other side of the hall. You know? <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> right of understanding. Yeah, that is there already. See, there is no need to make a law for that. You have the right of understanding. <laughs> Yeah, you can take a mic. Yeah. 